in you are an everlasting Lord. And we come before you this morning eager to worship, eager to seek your face, Lord. Come, quieten our hearts, cause our spirits to seek after you, Lord, this morning. Turn our eyes to you. Yang sempurna telah ku terima darimu bukan karena kebaikanku hanya oleh kasih karuniamu. pray this morning that even as we come that we may be able to pray that we may be able to seek that we may be able to ask in line with what He has in store for us turn our eyes turn our hearts to the Father above the good good Father the everlasting Father Kau beri yang ku pinta saat ku mencari ku Ketuk pintumu Dan kau bukakan Sebab kau Bapakku Bapa yang kekal 
Katakan kau biarkan aku melangkah hanya sendirian. Let's rise. Kau selalu ada bahagiku. Sebab kau bapakku, bapa yang kekal. Lord, we want to, even as we come this morning, draw near to you, because you are our everlasting Father. You are that perfect Father, and even as we come. We come, Lord, with confidence through Your Son Jesus Christ, that we can have this access even unto You. We come, Lord, because of the Holy Spirit that You have given to us as a mark and a sign of our very inheritance in You. And therefore, we thank You that we can draw near this morning, each one of us, as sons and daughters of the Father. And we want to just come, O oh Lord, resting in You. We want to just come, focusing our eyes upon You. We come, O oh Lord, with our praises, our worship, our sense of gratitude. Lord, we want to just come and honor You this morning. We want to just pray, inviting Your presence here this morning, asking also that as we minister to You. You will minister to us, and I pray for each one of us here this morning that you will meet us as we minister to you. That you will meet us at the point of our very needs, whatever that may be. Thank you, Lord, that you are our perfect Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are that everlasting Father. Lord, we want to just pray and ask that this morning. Be exalted, be lifted up, even in our midst as we worship you, Lord. We pray that you, Lord, will be pleased with our worship unto you. We want to also pray, committing the whole service into your hands, thanking you once again for the privilege of coming into your presence. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Over to you. Good morning, church. God is good, and all the time. This morning we are here to sing of a God that is good and to thank God for His goodness. Come. And God is good, so the time He put His song of praise in this time. God is good all the time through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good. So. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Let's sing again. God is good. God is good.
and your mercies endure forever. Amen.
To worship you because you are good. You are a great God. You are, an, you are an awesome God. And we want to follow you, Lord. Give us a heart like your heart. Give us eyes like your eyes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord, when we long to see your face. Jadikan hatiku seperti hatimu Tuhan Berikan ku hati yes. Berikan ku hati seperti hatimu Hati yang mengasihi jiwa yang terhilang Berikan ku mata seperti matamu Memandang jiwa yang dalam gelap I want to be Lord Ku mau berada dalam rencana in your plan dan melakukan perbuatannya yang besar memulihkan hati yang terluka menjadi rumah bagi Berikan ku mata seperti matamu Memandang jiwa yang dalam This is where I want to be Ku mau berakit yotas Dalam rencana
for your purpose to honor you to glorify you Lord this morning Lord this is our prayer this is our desire we want to serve we want to worship not only in church but in our daily lives the other six days we are not here Lord in our nine to five jobs in our relationships in the people that we meet we want to be your vessel Lord we want to be that light that shines in the darkness that all men may see and all men may know that you are God we do this not out of some desire for some selfish desire some wants of our own but because we love you because we love you and because you have been so good to us and this is our act of worship to you Lord yes Lord
us, Lord. May we not take that for granted. It can be so easy in our busyness to take you for granted, Lord. But Lord, we don't want to do that. We want to remember, Lord, every breath that we take, every breath that you are a good God, that you deserve us to be worshipping you. Help us, Lord, to be able to remember that even when we are so busy with life. You are a good God and you deserve our full worship and our full life to give to you, to worship you. May we have this time of intercession to also be near to you and to worship you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Today we'll be praying for India. Uh, please be seated. Today we'll be praying for India. I know we prayed for China last week and you're wondering, why India this week? So uh, this year we'll be having our anniversary gift day in May and we were hoping in the weeks leading up to that anniversary gift day we can pray for as many countries as we can. Actually, we're thinking about 195. I'm thinking, wow, how many, how many, how many days to come to pray for so many? But we will try. So today we will also start praying for India, the second large, no, actually the largest country. So last week, Hui En prayed for China. Today, we're praying for India. Do you know that India is called the Republic of India? It's not just India. And the capital is in New Delhi. And for such a big, big country, they have 28 states and 8 union territories. They are currently the most populous country in the world with over 1.4 billion people. Over that, more than that already. And the geography includes snow-covered Himalayan mountains in the north, to the tropical rainforest of the south. They have very, very different temperatures. Currently, there are about 79% Hindus, 15% Muslims, 2% Christians, and the rest are Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, and other religions. We also want to remember uh, our mission partner. If you know, sometimes we pray for them in India, Brother T. Raja and the New Ark Mission in Bangalore. This is the children from that particular mission. His ministry provides shelter and care for the homeless, uh, the mentally and physically challenged that are on the streets. Uh, they give them a meal, keep them some warmth, and I think maybe even shower and some medication to take care of those who are living on the streets. Okay, so in India, in the last few years, uh, there have been quite a few different things that have happened, including uh, growing nationalism with uh, religious intolerance, where the authorities can often be seen to punish the minorities who protest while absolving mobs who often are seen to be in the strength of uh, what they want to do and are often uh, seen to uh, also attack places that are not theirs in, in exchange. And also recent years, the religious intolerance has also led to deaths, many deaths. As well as the tighter restriction on civil society, if you read the news, um, the different amendments and restrictions in the last few years that has led to a further controlling of organisations that are critical to their work on the ground, denying that there's actually malnutrition or denying that there is hunger, but actually on the ground, uh, if they go closer to the ground, there is actually quite a lot of need, but the government has uh, denied that there is hunger or malnutrition in India. As well as the general elections that are coming up, uh, for a country like India, it's a very big deal for their GE. It will take place 
from next month till about May. It's quite long because they're a very, very big country. I'm going to pray for the almost 1 billion voters, okay? Because they're younger children, they cannot vote. So almost 1 billion voters will choose their national government. And the elections that will be full of uh, misinformation and fake news, we pray against the kind of information that is wrong and that is not right. And lastly, you want to also lift up the Christians in India that as a body of Christ, of many different uh, backgrounds and faiths and churches, that they, they will be united and to stand firm amidst uh, a lot of uncertainties and that they will be united in uh, one body and one voice for the church. Come, let's pray. Uh, the prayer points are for the Indian authorities and decision makers to work for the betterment of society and to help those in need. Uh, for a clean and fair India elections. And lastly, for the Christians in India to be firm in their faith amidst persecution and courage to share the love of Christ. Come, let's pray in groups of two and threes. Lord, we lift up our prayers into your hands for all that we have prayed and for all that we have concerned for for this nation of India. May you hear our prayers, Lord. And in all that we do, may we continue to seek you, Lord, in praying for the many nations around the world who are going through hard times, uh, tough times, uh, struggles with uh, different situations. We pray for leaders in India to be able to stand firm amidst corruption or even injustice. May you help uh, the Church of India to continue to uh, be united, Lord, as one body, that they will not be afraid of, of the government, but may they only be fearful of you to do what you have called them to do. And may they continue to be more fervent in prayer to seek you, especially in times of the national elections. That will be a big deal for the country. We pray that the information that is shared will not be of uh, untruths or, or false information, but may there be such a clear, clear understanding and message of truth and things that the government would be able to do well for the nation, Lord. Continue to lift up India into your hands, Lord. May you use this nation to be also a light to their neighbours, that even in the midst of their differences or what they're going through, that you will use this nation, Lord, also for your purposes and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. amen. Uh, let's also lift up this particular verse together. Uh, let's read it up. God, who said, Let, Let there, there be light in the darkness, darkness has, made has made this light shine, shine in our hearts so that, so that we could know the glory of God that is seen, that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Christ. May this happen in India too. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Shuyi, for leading us in intercession. 
and we all look forward to next week's topic for intercession, yeah? As we, as we intercede for the nations uh, towards our anniversary gift day as well. And now it's time for scripture reading. And I would like to invite Jordanton Kumar, who has also invited somebody dear to him, Mami Shalina, uh, to be participating as well. Deuteronomy 8, verse 10 unto 14. When you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty do, you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands, regulations, and decrees that I am giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and herds have become very large, and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else. Be careful. Do, do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Amen. Thank you, Jonathan and Selina. That was wonderful. How is your memory? And that's the question. And to help answer that question, or cause more pondering, we invite our brother, uh, Jory Leong. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Lam, for the introduction, and also Jonathan for the um, reading of the scripture. Maybe what we're going to do um, is that maybe, uh, can I invite you um, just to go to greet at least three persons this morning and say, how are you this morning? And God bless you. Can you do that? I hope you greeted people with a smile and not a long face. As Lam said that the title of my sermon this morning is How Long How Good Is Your Memory or How Is Your Memory? You know, memory is something that sometimes we take for granted, but if you think about it, without memory, life becomes complicated, isn't it? If today I've forgotten the name of somebody, if I want to call that person, how would I search for that person's number on the phone? As simple as that, isn't it? And memory also can be create complication on a serious note for people in our surroundings, our loved ones, who suffer from dementia and also Alzheimer's. So we got to also take time to recognize that it can be a complicated and a troubling issue. I have a friend whose mother who suffered from dementia for many years and became more and more progressive, the condition, until that even this person's mother could not even remember having had a meal a few minutes after having that meal. So imagine the mother or the person keep insisting that I haven't eaten and wants to continue to eat and not realizing that she is overfeeding herself. So just at this point, just to take note that recognize that it is a bit troubling for caregivers in our midst if you have loved ones who suffer from dementia or Alzheimer's. This is a picture of something that a habit of mine. I'm not sure whether you do the same thing, whether you can recognize this, what it is. Who can identify with me? I saw Pastor Kokmoy. Okay. 
I see Auntie ICU. How come old people and young people got raised hand or not? Okay, what is this? I, it's an actual, actual picture taken by me. Whenever I go to a shopping mall, it is my habit that I will take the number of the parking pillar next to my car. And why? Obviously, you can answer that because you may end up not knowing where your car is. I'm so curious too, that if I go to certain malls where I'm not familiar with, in particular, a mall that I hardly go, probably once only in five or ten years, is Sunway Pyramid. And it's so huge. For Sunway Pyramid, if I ever go, which I don't want to, not only do I take a picture of the parking pillar, I will also take a picture of the shop after the escalator from the car park. Because I may not know which escalator to go to my car park because I've experienced a very bad experience whereby I thought I did good enough by taking a picture of the parking pillar, but I did not take a picture of the escalator going down to the car park. So I keep on looking, looking, looking until somebody, one of the guards had to take me on his motorbike to look for my car. And that is real. You know, when we talk about having memory problems, it can be complicated, it can be difficult. Some of this will cause you inconvenience. Some situation of memory lapses can also be fatal. For example, if your husbands forget your wife's anniversary, habis, isn't it? But if a wife forgets her husband's anniversary, life goes on. So you, I'm sure you have your own method, your own approach as to how to remember your anniversary, isn't it? I have a unique way to remind myself when is my anniversary. All my family cars number plate is the same because it is our anniversary. Okay? The only problem I think as I go along is that if I look at the four digits of my car, I may reach a point in my life where I may forget which number is actually the day, which number is the month, or maybe even which number is the year. So I have to find another method in the years ahead. The point I want to share with us is the fact that issues of Having difficulty remember things is common to all of us. Many of us now today have reminder apps, isn't it? I use Google Keep. Some of you may use one, huh? uh, OneNote, Evernote, Apple Note, whatsoever. And then Google Calendar is so important because it reminds us of our next appointment. The point I want to emphasize to us today is that all of us are prone to forgetfulness. If we are honest to ourselves as this comic shows. All of us do have issues of forgetfulness. I know in our midst, some of you call it senior moments. In a Methodist church, we have a fellowship of senior citizens called what? The MSF. Those of you who are not familiar, MSF it stands for Methodist Senior Fellowship. But I must admit, and I seek for forgiveness of the old people in our midst, I call them Memory slowly fading. But my good brother in Christ, Mr. Bernard Tan, who is the president of MSF, corrected me. Maybe even rebuked me. He says, no, MSF stands for muscles still functioning. Okay, give yourselves a clap. Young people not clapping, only old people clapping. But I think that we need to take cognizance that memory is a very important part of life, isn't it? And today, I want to share with us about this passage that we read from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And the point that was that's highlighted to us in Deuteronomy chapter 8 is that Israel had a memory problem. And the memory problem that Israel had is not what we call a simple uh, forgetfulness of information, of events alone, but their problem, the memory problem that Israel had at that point of time is what I call spiritual amnesia, where they have forgotten God. And the passage was read to us so ably by Jonathan, um, I will re refer to this verse, these five verses repeatedly during my sermon this morning. You know, twice in these uh, five verses, Moses, who wrote uh, the book of Deuteronomy, reminded Israel not to forget the Lord. Not to forget the Lord. And if you have been reading the book of Deuteronomy through your BWJ, you probably would have noticed that the theme of remembering, the theme of not forgetting, runs right to, it recurs and repeats itself in the book of Deuteronomy. I did uh, my own search 
I believe that not less than 18 times, depending on which version of the Bible that you use, but at least in the NIV and NLT version, not less than 18 times, the word do not forget, the word remember occurs in the book of Deuteronomy. For those of you who like to fact check, I've given you the verses so that you know that the speaker here today is not lying to you. But the point that I want to emphasize is that the book of Deuteronomy is a reminder even to us that when Moses wrote this collective of sermons, as you know that Pastor Robin uh, started by explaining to us the background, which I will not go into of the book of Deuteronomy, it's a book written by Moses when the nation of Israel was on the threshold of entering into the promised land. What was Israel's memory problem? There are several, and it's not just an off one-time um, one time occurrence that they've forgotten something. Let me just quickly rehash and remind ourselves what happened. In the context of Deuteronomy chapter 8, in fact, and also chapter 6, which is actually a similar uh, wordings of verse, like I said, the context is that Israel was about to enter the promised land and Moses was preparing them with this warning, with this reminder. And he told them if they were not going to be careful, they would forget the Lord when they enjoy the abundance of the promised land. Again, the context. In the wilderness, they had not enough to eat, they had not enough to drink, they were in danger. God provided for them miraculously. Manna from heaven, water from the rock, pillar of fire, cloud to guide them, to protect them. But what Moses was saying that before you even enter the land of plenty, I want to warn you ahead that you do not forget the Lord. Why was Moses so sure that they will forget the Lord? Examples. You know, during the 40 years in the wilderness, many of the people of Israel started grumbling because they complained to God, complained about God, that even though they were saved from Egypt, they said, that, why do you save us from Egypt to this place of scarcity, to this land of nothingness? But yet they've forgotten God's faithfulness in saving them from a land of slavery and by miraculous parting of the Red Sea. And they also forgotten that whilst they were in the wilderness, they were protected and fed by the Lord in a way that no human being can fathom. Cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, manna from heaven and water from the rock. And then those of you who are familiar with Scripture, you will know there was a period of time whereby Moses was away waiting on the Lord at Mount Sinai. You know, they waited and waited and started forgetting to remain faithful to the Lord when Aaron was so-called temporarily in charge. They asked Aaron for a new God to worship and they asked for the golden calf. These are examples to, re to tell us that there is the context Moses was not simply reminding them not to forget God about something in the future without context. Moses knew that Israel has a propensity to forget the Lord. And when we talk about forgetting the Lord, the memory problem that people of Israel had was the fact that they have forgotten God's faithfulness, God's protection, and God's provision over their life. Three thoughts I want to share with you this morning. Firstly, is this. Forgetting God is forsaking God. You know, forgetting God is not just a lapse of memory. It is something that happens continuously in our life. It is more serious than just a lapse of memory. In verse 11, Moses wrote this in a passage that was read to us. He says that, Do not forget the Lord, your God, and disobey His commands, regulations, and decrees, that I am giving you today. You know, in the times of the Old Testament, when we talk about observing His commands, His decrees, it is actually a way of saying that where your state of relationship with God. Because remember, in the Old Testament context, your walk with the Lord is described by how you obey the decrees, the regulation, the decrees, the commandments of the Lord. So what Moses was telling them is the fact that when they forget the Lord, they will also walk away in their relationship with God. They will, they will forsake the Lord. Forgetting God is what I call a spiritual amnesia. It is more serious than just forgetting information or facts in our life. But there is also a serious consequence that will lead us to disobedience 
and walking away from the Lord. You know, some of you may be wondering, here am I sitting here in this church? Some of you online from wherever you are logging in from, why are you talking to me about forgetting Lord? I have not forgotten the Lord. I'm here this morning. And I do praise God for that. But the thing about forgetting God, it is not an overnight decision. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a very famous uh, German theologian of the early 20th century, he says this about, he wrote a book and he wrote about this part about temptation, how the devil tempts us. He says that Satan does not fill us with hatred of God, but with forgetfulness of God. What he's trying to say is that when the Satan wants to tempt us to forsake the Lord, to fall away, to walk away from our relationship with God, he does not suddenly create from us a moment, it's not a switch, you know, switch from loving God to hating God. You know what I'm saying? He's saying that we will, he will put us through a process of forgetting God. The easiest way for the devil to lead us away from the Lord is not to create hatred in our life for God, but is to instill in us a forgetfulness of God. When we forget God, verse 11 reminds us and tells us through Moses is the fact that we will ignore God's will upon our life. We will stop obeying Him. We will stop living a life based on what God wants from our life. We will do our own thing. I have a friend. Um, we have known each other for over 30 years. When we first started working uh, some 30 over years ago, I remember clearly that he initiated the idea of being accountability partner with me. And he suggested this. In fact, he was the one who prompted it, initiated it. He says that let's meet at least once every two weeks for lunch. And that one hour we spend just two of us to share what's been happening in our lives, to pray together and to encourage each other. And we even did some things. Uh, we did SMV, Scripture Memory Verse from the Navigator series, so that we encourage each other to have some focused uh, discussion points as well. Because we worked in the same um, office, it was easy for us to do that. So we met every, uh, once every two weeks. And I dare say that he was more disciplined than me, in a sense, he's the one who prompted me whenever a few days before that Friday and told me that, remember, this Friday, do not do anything, we're going to have lunch together. He would remind me all the time. After a year or so, uh, we stopped meeting regularly because he moved on to work at another workplace. And because we have, do not work at the same place, we do not keep in touch regularly. Um, but of course, being friends, we still do try to catch up once in a while. I can't recall how often, maybe once or twice a year. And I noticed that in my subsequent meetings with him in our conversation, there was a natural void in our conversation. There was no conversation about church life, about God. And partly my fault in the sense that I did not consciously bring that up, because, but whenever I talk about what's happening in my family, my church life, I noticed there's no response from his end. But one day I felt very troubled. I don't know how long it was after a number of times a few years later. I, when I met him again, I asked him, I said, you know, we've known each other very well for some time. I said, can I ask you how is your faith life? And he's a very honest person. In fact, he's a very kind, one of the kindest person. And he's got nothing to hide run. He'll tell me honestly that it doesn't, my faith life doesn't exist anymore. And I say, what happened? And he told me honestly that I can't quite recall what happened, he said. But essentially, life just got busy. He got married. Family, he started a family. And of course, there were some personal issues which are not mentioned here, which also caused him to get a bit distracted. Work was hectic. And with the culmination of all these factors, he says that God became sidelined in his life. And there were certain trigger events that caused him to be so disappointed with the people of God that he says that that was, as he calls it, the last straw and made him decide to walk away from even being part of a church. I share this because what he told me reminds me that nobody, and my, this brother, this friend, 
say that, you know, it's not like one day he just woke up and said, I don't want to become uh, a Christian or I don't want to walk with God. It is a gradual process. And what's more pertinent is that for a long period, he was still in church. He was still in fellowship with Christians. But nobody knew what was going inside his heart, his life. So remember this, when we talk about forgetting God, it is a journey, it is a process. And today I want to humbly challenge and ask all of us here today, where are we in our faith life? Where are we in the journey with the Lord? Because forgetfulness in our relationship with God is a process of gradual decline. It does not just happen overnight. The second thing I want to share with us is this phrase, forgetting God in your plenty. In verse 11, Moses says, and reminded and warned the people of Israel this, beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God. What was the plenty that Moses was warning or reminding or telling the people of Israel? The plenty, like I said, if you look at the context, of this passage was the plenty of from no food, no homes, nomadic lifestyle to a land of abundance, Canaan land, the promised land, whereby they will have plenty. If you look actually at verses 7 to 9, it has got a beautiful description of the promised land. It says that it is a land of wheat and barley, grape wines, fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, which means Today's terms, maybe some of you don't like wheat and barley. Lah. I also don't like. But in their context, it was something that is beautiful. I don't want to take the risk of trying to paraphrase it in today's context. Ah. You might think that I'm trying to be uh, heretical in my... I want to say, you, you're hawking me, whatever. Don't believe that. Okay. But whatever it is, it is something that they enjoy in their life. But what happened? Moses was reminding the people to be careful not to forget the Lord in your plenty. My question to me, my question to you this morning is that what is your plenty? What is your plenty today? Your plenty could be take many, many different forms. Of course, none of us are going through a period of hunger whereby you cannot identify with the time of the Old Testament during the time of Israel. But your plenty could be as simple as the most obvious one, when life is comfortable, when your bank account is full, when your career is going well, when your family is healthy. And for many of us here who are retired people, you are enjoying your retirement. And for those of you who are young, you have just got the best news that you're going to study in the course that you believe in, that you enjoy, and you're doing well in your studies. But I want to say this, none of this is wrong. None of these are wrong. They are blessings from the Lord. Rejoice in the fact that the Lord has blessed you with good health, with good life, with good family, and even enjoying your vacation, your retirement. Moses did not tell them not to enjoy the plenty in the abundant land. Do not misread scripture. The plenty that Moses was telling that God has leading them into is the Lord's blessing upon them. So it's nothing wrong. It is a blessing from the Lord. But the problem arises. The problem arises when in your plenty you forget the Lord. You enjoy the plenty more than you enjoy and value your relationship with God. Understand that properly. Sometimes we have this problem thinking that the things that we are enjoying is bad. So the only way to honour God is to not enjoy them. Does that mean that we start hating our children, start hating our loved ones? No, that's not what the Lord is saying. Remember, the Lord is the giver of the blessings of the plenty in our life. It may not be material plenty. It may be a physical health plenty. It may be an emotional plenty. That is the blessing of the Lord. But the question for us this morning is that how is our state of spiritual life? 
are we gradually descending into a complacency whereby God has become a sideline. And it applies, like I said, through all seasons of our life, from all ages, from children, youth, to young working adults, to middle-aged people, and also to senior citizens. All of us have plenty, a season of plenty in our life. And what are we doing with that season of plenty? How many of you recognize what is this fish? Not many do, okay. It is a fish called empurao. Who now recognizes what's empurao? It, in Mandarin, it's called wang pu liao. Okay, wang pu liao. The re, wang pu liao means what? Unforgettable. I'm told it is one of, if not the most expensive fish in the market. Um, I read somewhere, I've never bought one before, I'm told that in the raw form, this fish will cost about 500 ringgit per kilogram. So don't calculate, huh? if you talk about cook in a restaurant, it will cost you easily uh, four figures. Some years ago, I received a call from one of our neighbors, and uh, I answered the call, and the person says, hey, I call you because I can't get hold of Melissa. And I say, oh, yeah. Uh, so she asked, naturally, where are you? I say, I actually happened to be at that time in China for some work meetings. And I said, anything uh, that you want to talk to me about or talk to Melissa about? She, she said, okay, sorry to disturb you, but very quickly, I would like to, my husband and I would like to invite both of you for dinner uh, three days from now. I remember it was a Wednesday or Thursday, the dinner was supposed to be Saturday evening. So I said, okay, um, uh, anything special occasion or whatever, you know, uh, wondering why last minute notice, you know. So, um, so she said, no, 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 sorry for the short notice because I've just was told by a friend that they found an empurao for me. And the empurao is about four kilogram. And I'm going to give to a very special cook in a restaurant to cook it for not only, of course, two couples, but I'm going to invite other friends, uh, neighbors to come together. I wasn't so sure whether I'll be back by Saturday night, but immediately I said, Ken. <laughs> that is my intuitive mode. Huh? I switch into the gluttony mode, okay? I said, Ken, okay, we'll, I'll be there. I told Melissa after that, I can't remember what sequence or what I did. I immediately checked my flight schedule. I was supposed to have arrived back, I think, on a Saturday late afternoon. I was worried that I cannot make it. So careful that I even brought forward my flight to Saturday morning. Uh, that is my disciplined self about food. But Saturday night came, we went for the dinner, we had a private room, there were 10 of us, five couples, and the host said, that, hey, I brought my ampurawa to the chef the day before to prepare it. So we were all eagerly chatting and looking forward to the ampurawa. But this host is very generous. So say that, you know, of course, we are not here only to eat ampurawa, we ordered other dishes. So first dish came, I think it's soup. Second dish came, not ampurawa. Third dish came, we ate. Fourth dish came, we ate. Fifth dish came, we ate. Sixth dish came, we ate. I think ampura was the seventh dish lah. By the time it came, we were marveling at it, but there was a problem. If empura is the seventh dish, what would happen in the first six dishes? We were almost full. We were 80, 90 percent full. We cannot say we don't eat the first dishes, right? Because we are guests. So by the time the empura came, even though we all savored and enjoyed the first few bites of the fish, we could not finish the fish. And in fact, honestly speaking, after the first several bites, we somehow failed to fully appreciate the texture of empurao. You know, those of you who know empurao, empurao is very uh, sweet in its flavor, in its texture, it's creamy and also um, creamy and thick and fatty. We didn't quite enjoy it, even though it is the first time for all of us to savor this particular fish. The point I want to emphasize or illustrate is that from this simple example is that we lose our sense of appreciation when we are full. And that's exactly what Moses said in verse 10. When you have eaten your fill, sure, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. When you have eaten your fill. You know, when you have eaten your fill in life, you will also lose the sense of appreciation of the good things that God has blessed you with. Has God become, therefore, in, uh, God become dispensable? God has become unimportant? 
when we have eaten our fill in our life. Oh, by the way, another side note, nah, sorry quickly about Empurawa. I'll share with you another secret. Nah. A few weeks ago, or a few months ago, one member of this church also mentioned Empurao to me. He said he got a way to get Empurao. He told me, I get it, I will invite you. This is a gentle reminder to that person that I still remember. <laughs> I'm waiting for their phone call. I won't tell you who, lah. otherwise, not enough to eat, you know, depends on how many, what's the size of the Empurao. Important dates in your life. How many of you remember details of dates that matters to you? I'm sure you do. You would probably remember every single detail of your wedding day. For those of you who are younger who have just graduated, you will probably remember the date of your graduation. Those of you who got fantastic results, maybe the day by, by you got the results or the offer letter from the place of study that you always coveted or wanted. For those of you who are, have started a young family, you probably remember the day when your firstborn came to this world. You can probably tell me a lot of details if I ask you that important day in your life. But if I ask you today, can you recall what happened two days before that important day? Two days before. I'm sure most of you, and me included, would cannot tell you anything. What happened two days before that important day? It's because those, that two days before the important day is not important to us. We don't spend time reminiscing, we don't spend time recollecting or remembering what happened. And the reason is because those days are not important. The important day is the day that's two days after. And why I share this with you is because we will also forget God if God becomes unimportant in our life. It happens through time, it happens through neglect. And that is the danger that Moses wanted to warn the people of Israel. When life becomes full, when you have seasons of plenty, which I'm sure all of us do have, and for that we must always thank God and praise God. But never ever forget the Lord. And that leads me to the last point I want to share with us this morning is this. The word for us all today is to remember God. Is to remember God. This may not be something new, not a new theological truth that I'm teaching you. But ironically, that's the key point, isn't it? Sometimes we don't need to come to church just for some new theological truth. In fact, many a times we need to come to church or come before the Lord to be reminded of things that we already know. Things that we already know in our life. C.S. Lewis said this, which I thought is very apt. He says that people need to be reminded more than instructed. People need to be reminded more than instructed. Because if we come to a place of fellowship, a place, even a church, and the only thing we look for is things to learn new, which is not wrong, which is good. But I think many a times, we also need to be reminded of things that we already know. In fact, if you go back to the uh, Old Testament, the word remember, the theme of remembering, occurs almost 200 times. So which means the key trait of the people of Israel is forgetfulness is forgetting the faithfulness and the love of the Lord. You know, remembering is not about nostalgia. It is not about just going back in time and living in the past. The kind of remembering that Moses is telling us or telling the people of Israel and equally applicable to us is a kind of remembering that is not only sits in our mind, but this kind of remembering that also stirs our heart and stirs our spirit. It is what I call remembering with our heart. Remembering with our spirit. Because when we do that, our faith, our hope in the Lord will be awakened. For those of us who are falling into a slumber, the Lord may need to awaken us. The Lord may need to stir us to recalibrate our life. Because when we talk about losing focus, losing focus is not something that happens 
just like that. It happens because we have made the choice to treat God as unimportant, as a side dish in our life. The title of my sermon is, How is Your Memory? And I think that it is something that all of us, all of us need to always be asking ourselves, how is our memory, how is our spiritual memory? A Christian brother, I think a few months ago, called me and said that he wants to have dinner with me. Uh, let's call him A. Lah, huh? okay. So A says that I want to have dinner with you because I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, which is B. So I said, okay, but normally, you know, I, I mean, much as I enjoy a meal with my friends, I also want to know what's the uh, purpose of the meeting. So I said, what's up? Okay, well, what are we going to talk about since I do not know B? He says that, okay, I want to introduce you to B because I plan to enter into a new business venture with B to add a new revenue stream to my business. You know, expand the business, lah, revenue stream. So, but I need you to be there because I want you to hear and give some input, some thoughts, and probably ask some questions so that help me to run through it as my sounding board. I said, okay, I'll do that. So we had dinner and I heard, listened to A and B, introduced to them, and I, was, I marveled at the excitement, uh, the fact that they wanted to do something that is in the, I would call it is an alternative way of doing a business. Uh, a normal brick and mortar business by using the uh, internet, uh, in, using, uh, how to say, the web space to, to, to promote it. But never mind, that's beside the point. So I listened and I gave my feedback. So we had dinner together. So I gave the pros and cons. I normally very direct one. I say these are your pros and cons. I even told them one thing. I said that both of you are very good friends for umpteen years. When you go into business, be prepared. You can, your friendship can break not only in bad times, but also good times. It's something that you have to grapple with, whether you can live with that, you can live with that maybe apart from commercial considerations. So at the end of dinner, B said, I need to go off, so B go off. So I wanted to leave also. But A asked me to stay back for a while, want to ask B something else. So when A, I stayed back with A, A asked me a very interesting question. He said, how do I stay close to the Lord in good times? How do I stay close to the Lord in good times? Wow, I said, very interesting question. I said, why? He said, I am going through a period whereby I'm very happy. I'm happy in my relationship with the Lord. In fact, this brother backslid, backslid for many, many years. And through certain association I had with him and another person for some years, he came back to the Lord. I even recommended him to read Purpose Driven Life. And we meet regularly, maybe once in two months or whatever. And he said that I'm happy in my life. I started this new business that um, I took a while to come to courage to do it. I'm, I'm doing very well and it's flourishing. And I have got a beautiful family and now I'm thinking of expanding. But he said that in recent weeks, I started being so busy that I stopped thinking about God, spent, stopped spending time with Him. In fact, this brother is so serious with the Lord, he went for Alpha. He even went, his wife used to joke with me and Melissa, say that, you know, he goes to church three times, you know, Sunday morning, Alpha also he goes. He also goes for Alpha marriage. You know, he even invites many people to Alpha. So that is his zeal. But he says that I am at the point of my life that everything is so-called going so well. Yet I'm so afraid that God is sidelined. And he said, I'm feeling it already. I'm feeling it. I paused because I didn't want to give him a very glib, glib means superficial answer. I had to pause because I say that very few people will ask me that one, you know, because when people are enjoying their life and they're ignoring God, they will not tell people or they just move along. And I said this, you know, I, first of all, I must commend you because you are aware of what's happening in your life. And that is already a very strong plus point. And the second thing, which I don't know why I say this, I say maybe in this season of your life, you should ask less and praise more. He said, what do I mean? You know, when seasons and times of plenty, maybe, yeah, we still continue to ask the Lord for certain wisdom, for answers, but maybe this is a season whereby you keep thanking God for things in your life. As what Moses said, 
when you have eaten your fill, praise the Lord your God who brought you into this good land. And I say, keep reminding yourself. And in your praise, you will remind yourself of the goodness of God upon your life. And because you want to warm your spirit, you want to awaken your spirit, do not let the spirit of God that is in you to be diminished by the distractions of what is good in your life. I did not tell him that do not expand your business. I don't believe in that because I believe we must have the spirit excellence to continue to do the best for the Lord, even in your marketplace. But I told him that in your time with the Lord, continue to be grateful, continue to praise Him, ask less, in the sense that don't always go come to God only when you need to ask for something. Learn to praise Him. Because that also has been somewhat my own personal discipline. When God has been good, sometimes we quickly move on to asking for some more things. But learn to praise the Lord. Learn to be thankful. Learn to be grateful. For gratefulness will keep us grounded. In fact, in Deuteronomy 8, in verse 14, it says that do not be proud. Do not be proud means do not think that all that you have in your life is through your own achievement. Can I invite the worship team to come right now? I think it is a good time even as I end my sermon for us to spend some time to reflect. Because when we talk about remembering, it involves reflecting. It involves coming before the Lord quietly in our spirit to seek the heart of God. Only the Lord knows what is in you right now. For those of you who are truly in a season of plenty, continue to thank God, continue to praise God. Continue to rejoice that our God is a God of faithfulness, a God of love. We'll do goodness of God later. Continue to thank God that He is the giver of all things and when He gives, He gives us things for our good. But it, the problem is when the good things that God gives us, it is through our disobedience, we turn it into something bad. And so even as we come, as I end this morning, I want to encourage us to inculcate a discipline. Some even dare call it a spiritual discipline of remembering. You know, when we talk about spiritual discipline, it's always about reading the Word of God, it's about prayer, fasting. All these are still there. But one spiritual discipline that many of us do not exercise in our life is to remember. And I think that it is important for us to have this spirit and the ability, attitude of remembering what God has done in your life and what God is still doing in your life. And the song that was sung to us in worship, The Goodness of God, is a very powerful song because it reminds us that in the lyrics, listen carefully, that God is indeed not any good. And when we are remembered, uh, when we remember the goodness of God, we know that God is alive all the days of our life. So even as I close, I want to just invite us to sing along with the worship team this song, The Goodness of God, and ask the Lord to allow His Spirit to minister to us. And also allow the Lord to use the words of this song to quicken and awaken our spirit for those who feel that in truest honesty there is some slumber in you. Only you will know what state of slumber you are in. Because on the outside, it is not easily manifested. Because we still come to church. But do you come to church because it is a rule? It is just a habit? But I pray and I hope that we will have that desire to say that, Lord, I want that relationship with you that is real, that will continue on and on, and that you will use me, Lord, truly, to be that catalyst, to be a blessing to people around me.
I've been held in your hands from the moment I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's rise and sing this unto the Lord. If you love, oh, your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head now I will sing of the goodness of God together so my life the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest times, you are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God together So my life you have been faithful So my life All my life you have been so the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Maybe without the music, all my life. All so my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so Father, we recognize the fleetingness even of our own feelings. Lord, we recognize that many times we forget you, especially in good times or even in times of great difficulties. Lord, I want to just pray that this morning as you have spoken to us, encouraging us, to remember you, to come back to you. Thank you, Lord, that there is always that promise of restoration and renewal. Even as we place our faith, our trust, our hope, our joys, our pains in you. Thank you that you are our everlasting Father. Thank you that you are our perfect Father. Thank you, Lord, for your love and for the fact that you are a God of covenant who does not change. 
And Lord, we want to just bring our lives afresh before you, praying and asking that even this morning, as we have been challenged, that we remember you, and not only just remembering you, but we continue to also pray that, you, that we will encounter you as well. Even as we bring ourselves afresh to you, work, help us to work out, Lord, this reality of that relationship with you. As we allow you to work in us, we want to give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Pastor Robin. Church, we now come the time for us to worship with our gifts and offerings. Can I invite the ushers to come forward? And as you prepare for your gifts and your offerings, yeah? if you are online, you can also use your Touch and Go app. Uh, uh, turn, turn your Touch and Go app on and then click on the scan button and scan the QR code and you will be transferring directly to the correct bank account. For uh, visitors, uh, please do not feel obliged uh, to participate in this and help us to pass the bag along the, the chairs. Yeah? Come, let's pray. Father God, we thank you with much appreciation and much uh, gratitude that we can have this time uh, to come uh, to worship you with gifts and offering. We pray the use of these resources uh, with wisdom by the church leaders for your expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. The bags will be passed around now. We welcome visitors. If there are any, uh, you can just stand up or wave your hands. Nevertheless, all of us are invited for coffee, tea and conversations after service outside this hall. Yeah? Uh, there is a a friend of ours for 25 years, I think, from Myanmar, Pastor Pak Kim. Uh, he's over there. Pastor Pak Kim, please stand. We would also like to give this time for Pastor Pak Kim to say a word of welcome to us as a church. Yeah? Thank you very much, all of us, especially. I have a short time to testimony for 25 years. So long, but uh, I will say it's very short. So my name is uh, Pak Kim. Uh, when I was 12 years, uh, I become a born again. Then I joined the Bible school. Then after I finished Bible school, they sent me Golden Triangle. So Golden Triangle means Myanmar, Thai, and Laos. So they are, they are, they are, we call it Golden Triangle. Then I live in the Tachi Lake, Golden Triangle city of Tachi Lake. Then uh, 1996, I started a uh, uh, small churches with uh, eight people, eight members. So three family, we are started the church there. Then uh, day and night, we are going to evangelize. Then uh, 1999, so we start uh, a small uh, Bible school. That's in 1999, so we pray, then we are work hard, then so God's open the door for us, the SSMC, Myanmar Mission Team, they come to my Bible school, then they are teaching uh, how to do home cell, 6W, W6, we remember this. Then the SSMC Myanmar team said, teach us chest planting. How to do chest planting? So we will be start the chest planting. Then so that time we have a three church only. Three church, then so 16 graduate Bible student. Then we are pray. Then we have fasting three days and started to chest planting. So they are starting to chest planting, evangelism, any place. Then God uh, give us. 22 churches in 1996. In 2006, the whole year, we can plant the 22 churches. That's so wonderful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here, SSMC brother and sister, you support us. So more money, 
more worker, so more are planting of churches. And the end of the year, 21 churches again we planted. 2006 and 7, during two years, we can plant 43 churches. Wonderful, huh? wonderful. Then every year uh, we are continue chest planting, chest planting, chest planting, because SMC, SSMC teach us how to plant churches. This is a wonderful. Then now we have 130 churches are working with me. So this uh, I have uh, I have a testimony. Then we started three churches in Laos. Uh, so, especially this time, they invite me to come to Malaysia. Then so I'm coming to this time. Then I have a time to sharing, uh, sort of my testimony. I'm very happy. Thank you very much, all of us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Pastor Pakim. And now for some announcements, uh, some quick ones. Tuesday night, we meet with the convenience of Zoom online for our prayer meeting. But by the end of this week, Saturday, it will be March the 2nd, and we are due for our monthly uh, opportunity to meet physically here uh, for incense arise, a time of waiting on the Lord, worship, and prayer together. So remember, also this Saturday evening, 7.30, here in this hall itself. Now, afterwards, there will be a briefing for those who have some curiosity or keen to participate as our church online uh, streaming team member, yeah? So since, ever since MCO and the pandemic years, we have been streaming our morning services online. Now the primary preferred platform is the church online platform, which is full screen, high definition video. Uh, there's a, there's, there are functions for uh, conversations, for chatting, and it has millions of prayer rooms in there. That means to say, uh, those who are online now in the church online platform, you click on the request prayer and then you will be directed into a prayer room and one of the church online ministry team members will minister to you privately on a private chat in that prayer room. And if another person clicks request prayer, another room will be set up because it's online, it has millions of rooms. And so the opportunity is there for you to participate as both a ministry team leader uh, to be part of this team of, uh, of uh, administering our church online platform. Yeah? So if you have curiosity, no commitments needed, uh, just, just uh, listen in uh, to the briefing. Yeah? Thank you. Ladies Bible study, the next series will begin in two weeks' time. Uh, it is also has the convenience of being online on Zoom. Uh, it's on a Saturday early afternoon uh, for a few weeks. Uh, please take note and uh, register or express your interest. Now, this announcement, this is important. All years, please. The church is organizing this. It is an equipping weekend for all of us. And it is entitled The Kingdom Life. Yeah, we all know that Jesus offers us an abundant life or the kingdom life. But we all also experience varying degrees of life challenges and especially emotional ones uh, in our journey. Yeah? And so, this first equipping weekend uh, for 2024 is about removing obstructions and advance, removing obstructions to the path of kingdom life. So the good news is that our Lord Jesus Christ can and desires to set all of us free yeah, from our challenges, especially emotional challenges, and cleanse us, heal us, and restore us to be emotionally healthy disciples, enabling us to grow and to live the full and fruitful life He provided. Uh, so this first equipping weekend, we begin with removing obstructions to the path of kingdom life. We are glad uh, that we have been able to make arrangements for the ministry team called Releasing and Advancing the Kingdom Ministry, or R for Releasing, A for Advancing, K for Kingdom, R-A-K Ministry, uh, to facilitate us in this weekend equipping. 
So uh, if you want to check out them out, it is rakministry.com on the website. Yeah? Now, who should attend? The answer is everyone. Yes, all. All, all should attend. Huh? The sessions will offer scriptural teaching and practical guidance aim to be benefiting individuals and equipping everyone with the basic knowledge to also minister to others. So you attend for your own benefit and you attend so that you can be a blessing to others. Yeah? As a disciple, you learn and as a disciple, making disciple, you teach others to learn along the way. Now what do you need to do now? You need to remember the date. So, yeah, so take out your calendar, if it's digital, and mark the dates. Uh, 16 March, Saturday, 10 to 4, and continue Sunday, 17 March, 1 to 4, in the convenience of this hall, and with the practical, uh, very good lunch uh, prepared for us as well. Yeah, so uh, you register online, either through the link or Immediately, when your DG leader sends you the link, you quickly register, least you forget. Yeah, thank you so much for your kind attention. It's now time to just give thanks for uh, the offering we gave just now. Come, we sing our thanksgiving together. Let's receive the benediction. May the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and presence of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever, and also throughout this week. Lord, even as we have come to worship you, dismiss us to be, to, to serve you, wherever you are sending us. We want to just give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.